<laughs> Scott, uh, I, I really am a big follower and admirer of your Twitter feed. You're getting a lot of beautiful images from the space station, and I know you have some other creature comforts, like the new espresso machine. You know, the, the space station is actually a, uh, y y you know, even though it's a remote place and it's a tough environment because you can never leave, there's no running water, um, you have a lot of work to do, you're always at work. There are little things uh, that make life here more normal, like the espresso machine, which we just got running, uh, which, by the way, is a science experiment, and we only have 15 uh, espresso capsules, so we're kind of rationing those. But it worked great, tasted great. Um, recently got a uh, projector television to use for work-related things like video conferences and uh, and some software we, we can look at on it, but we also use it to watch movies. So, yeah, some of those little small things uh, make a big difference up here. <laughs> Sorry. So, on January 3rd, 2018, there was a major malfunction on what's called the International Space Station. In a video on NASA's YouTube channel called Space Station Crew Members Discuss Life in Space with the Media, the three actronauts, <clears throat> excuse me, astronauts, all disappear simultaneously while the background layer of the ISS remains intact. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good flight and uh, many more exciting experiments on the orbit. Thanks a lot. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. When you look at this thing, this thing, this, and the actors, they are the only things that mess up. Watch closely. This is a big deal because it means without any doubt whatsoever that there was live editing and video manipulation. Not only would the background get scrambled as well, but these guys wouldn't all disappear at the same time. So check that one out on NASA's channel. I'll leave a link in the description. There are a lot of us that have been showing this stuff for years, and people are waking up to the deception, while some refuse to acknowledge it. In fact, many people hold the idea of outer space and NASA very near and dear to their hearts. So much so, that when they are shown this evidence, their ego won't allow them to accept that space is a hoax. Years of psychological programming through various media doesn't help either. But whether we like it or not, NASA and all the other space agencies are lying to the world. They're lying to you. They're lying to your kids. We've caught NASA too many times to count at this point. We catch them glitching. There's this one video where the actor is going around a corner and he is faded out before making it completely out of the viewer's sight.
Let's not forget space bubbles. Dave Williams about to move out of the Quest airlock. Uh, those particles that you see emanating from uh, the airlock is uh, said by the EVA officer, Paul Bame in Mission Control to be uh, particles of water from the crew's uh, sublimators on their spacesuits. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Oh, and it just happens that actors train in an underwater tank. NASA tells us that the Earth is photoshopped because it has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then there was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit command Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. Some NASA actors say that you can totally see stars when you're in space. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. It's it's not a black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the they, Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal light. Whoa. But the NASA actors from 1969 say that you can't see the stars in space. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. You can see the stars. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. I don't remember seeing any. NASA says that we can't leave low Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And this is really the beginning, I think, of human beings leaving low Earth orbit. Well, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. Well, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. 
We cannot leave the Earth. NASA tells us that they lost the 1960s technology that took us to the moon. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Uh, the ultimate destination is Mars. See, if you gave me all the money in the federal budget today, I could not get a human to Mars. I think that what you're doing is taking a shot in the dark. You have no way of knowing if any commercial entity will ever be able to put a man in orbit, no matter how much money you throw at them. What you're doing is you're taking NASA's manned space program and making it a faith-based initiative. I yield the rest of my time. NASA also says that they lost the telemetry data for the moon missions. I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence, and as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to, as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists or not. Speaking of fabricated moon missions, we as humanity have been being systematically brainwashed to accept the moon landing when they finally did fake it. For instance, in 1902, the very first sci-fi movie ever made came out. It was called A Trip to the Moon. The guy who made this, George Malise, made all sorts of similar short movies around the same time. The Astronomer's Dream. Impossible Voyage. Courtship of the Sun and Moon. Conquest of the Pole, the North Pole that is. Anyway, more pre-moon landing movies that conditioned us mentally were Destination Moon from 1950, nineteen fifty five Conquest of Space. Nineteen fifty eight From the Earth to the Moon. That's the same year NASA was established. Nineteen sixty Twelve to the Moon. Then, in 1962, JFK gave his famous We choose to go to the moon speech. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Followed by more mental conditioning in First Men in the Moon, 1964. And Jules Verne's Rocket to the Moon in 1967. In 1969, NASA goes to the moon for the first time, where President Nixon talked to them on the phone with no problem. Hello, Neil and Buzz. 
I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. Only there is a problem. Nixon would not have been able to talk to them because the moon is supposedly 238,000 miles away. From then on, most of the world believes that NASA really goes to a place called outer space, and anyone that disagrees is an ignorant conspiracy nut lacking in education. It's not all their fault though. The propaganda is rampant. In 1981, MTV launches and does their first broadcast with the use of NASA imagery. Seven, six, five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. MTV even uses an astronaut on the moon as the logo for movies. And they give out the astronaut statue for best music video award. This is because MTV is ran by Freemasons. They even operate out of a Freemasonic temple. You see, NASA is also a Masonic entity. Most, if not all, NASA astronauts belong to a lodge, like our buddy Buzz Aldrin here. Freemasons are just drudges in the grand scheme of things. They do a lot of grunt work for the Grand Deception and the New World Order. Freemasonry is a Jewish establishment whose history, grades, official appointments, Passwords and explanations are Jewish from beginning to end. Isaac Wise Also, I'm not saying that all Freemasons are bad or in on any conspiracy. There are certain lodges and certain individuals and families that are privy to the teachings of the mystery schools because of their social status. It's not for your average Freemason that joined the local lodge down the street. Anyway, back to Buzz Aldrin. This guy has lived his whole life being a puppet for a more sinister power. He is still 100% under oath to obey today. Here he is at some fashion show with Bill Nye. Looking good, Buzz, looking good. Speaking of Bill Nye, this guy was an actor on a sketch comedy show called Almost Live before being picked up by Disney in 1993. We all love Disney, right? Well, Disney, with the 666 in his logo, has a special club at Disneyland called Club 33. And if that wasn't enough, Walt Disney helped found NASA along with Werner Von Braun, L. Ron Hubbard, and Jack Parsons. Here to introduce you to this new series is Walt Disney. 
In our modern world, everywhere we look, we see the influence science has on our daily lives. Discoveries that were miracles a few short years ago are accepted as commonplace today. Many of the things that seem impossible now will become realities tomorrow. To this day, our minds are under attack constantly by these parasites. We are submerged in a sea of programming and brainwashing to believe in things that have not and cannot be proven. They want us to believe that Earth is the result of an accidental Big Bang that gave way to life of single-celled organisms that eventually turned into fish, then amphibians, then monkeys, and then us. We are told that we live on a rock that spins as it flies through outer space and at any moment we can be destroyed by an asteroid or invaded by aliens. They say that one day the sun will die out and all of this is over. Well, gee, if that doesn't make you feel special, then I don't know what will. Question everything, because everything you think you know is wrong. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.